My name is Ann Seitzinger. And I'm Kimberly Clarkin. And, and today, today we're, we're going to tell you about thermoregulation in reptiles. Thermoregulation is a crucial part of a reptile's life in order to maintain a temperature high enough for their metabolism to function properly. Thermoregulation is most commonly found in cold-blooded reptiles. Cold-blooded means reptiles cannot warm up their own bodies from the inside, like humans. Instead, they warm themselves from things outside their body, which is called thermoregulation. Examples of cold-blooded reptiles are turtles, crocodiles, lizards, and snakes. These four examples will be explained in today's episode. Let's get started, shall we, Kimberly? Yes, let's. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about today is thermoregulation in sea turtles. Thermoregulation in sea turtles is different because sea turtles are aquatic reptiles. All sea turtles have some characteristics in common. One trait is shared by all reptiles being cold-blooded. Because they are cold-blooded, that means that their bodies are the same temperature as their surroundings. Surroundings both increase and decrease their body temperature. Sea turtles are neither purely ectothermic nor purely endothermic. Wow, Kimberly, that's really interesting. Yeah, sea turtles are really interesting. What do you mean when you say ectothermic and endothermic? Well, ectothermic means that it absorbs its heat through its body, while endothermic means it generates its heat through its metabolism. Wow, sea turtles are interesting. Yeah, so is thermoregulation. Next off, I'm going to be talking to you about our second reptile, crocodiles. Thermoregulation is different in crocodiles because it, crocodiles live part-time in the water and part-time out of the water. Like all reptiles, crocodiles are cold-blooded. The crocodiles rely on external heat sources to re regulate their body temperature. They move in and out of the water and bask in the sun. When they get too hot, they head for the shade or open their mouths for evaporative cooling. If they are still too hot or disturbed, they slip back into the water. Wow, and thermoregulation in crocodiles is also interesting. The way that they choose between living on land and in the water. Yeah, to improve their thermoregulation, crocodiles will often choose the warmer of two mediums, air or water, to control the body temperature. Wow, that's fascinating. The third reptile we'll be talking about today is lizards. Lizards thermoregulate by behavioral and physiological adjustments. Lizards are mostly ectothermic. To maintain an adequate body temperature, ectotherms must thermoregulate. This is accomplished by basking in the sun or lying on or under a sun-warmed object. Lizards are cold-blooded reptiles that raise their body temperature by lying in the sun or lower it by crawling into the shade. Their body temperature changes to the temperature of its surroundings. Well, Kim, so lizards do know when they've been exposed to too much heat. Yes, lizards do know when they've been exposed to too much heat, but usually they use most of that heat to perform their main functions. Interesting. <laughs> so for our fourth and final reptile, I will be talking to you about snakes and how they adapt to thermoregulation. A snake's body temperature and so its level of activity is controlled by the temperature of the air in the ground. It will try to maximize body heat by basking in the sun or lying on or near warm surfaces such as nighttime roads or even on occasion household water heaters. However, in the more temperate climate along the coast that they shelter in rock crevices and logs during cold weather and come out on warm days to soak up the heat of the sun. During the cold weather, snakes are less active and therefore hunt less. In the winter, their metabolism slow down and they use up the body fat which has been stored up during the warmer months of the year. Wow, and thermoregulation in snakes is really fascinating, the way that their metabolism slows down in the winter. It is really fascinating, the fact that they can go from being ectothermic, absorbing heat from the sun, to endothermic, generating heat from their metabolism. Well, that's all for tonight's episode on thermoregulation and reptiles. Tune in next week when we talk about thermoregulation through animals. See you later, guys. Remember, I'm Ann Seisinger. And I'm Kimberly Clarkin.